Okay, so we're back. Um, we've just been looking at um, at order of vanishing and and, a func and uh, the order of vanishing in an example that will be very important. The order of vanishing of functions in an elliptic curve, the function y and the function x minus e1, where e1 is one of the roots of the uh, uh, cubic polynomial in x. Um, and we'll come back together. We're going to build on this example quite a bit to compute things like the genus of the elliptic curve uh, later on. Okay, but let me let me continue with the with the theory here. We are actually going to be interested in seeing uh, talking about uh, the function field. We've seen like we're interested in transcendence degree of this function field. Um, so one thing uh, that one one result that is of of note here is that if I have a curve. Uh, then uh, if I have a uniformizer, uh, at a smooth point, P in C, then it turns out that um, the, uh, the function field, uh, you can, uh, so if I join to K, if I join the uniformizer, that is a function in the function field. So you might wonder how far am I once I have one uniformizer to having the entire function field. And it turns out that the function field is just a finite separable extension of the extension that is uh, K adjoined the uniformizer. Okay, and we're going to talk quite a bit more right now about um, about uniform or about extensions of the of the um, of the function field. Uh, but let me put a, a, a header here. Now we're going to talk about uh, uh, maps on curves. So um, so here's another proposition that is useful. about maps. Uh, so if C is a curve and we have a variety, a projective variety, uh, and P is a smooth point on C, um, and um, phi from C to V is a rational map, uh, then it turns out that the, um, this, the regularity at P is, comes from free from the smoothness of the point, then uh, phi is regular at P. Okay, so remember, for example, in the previous example we had about regularity, it was going from an elliptic curve to P1, and I was just essentially from X, Y, just keep the X coordinate. And we were wondering if the function was regular at infinity at the point zero, one, zero. That came from free from this proposition uh, that it has to be regular at that point because the elliptic curve is smooth at that point. Okay, so, um, so that's something that you can use um, to avoid having to prove regularity at some point. Uh, in particular, if uh, C is smooth, so if it is smooth everywhere, then any such uh, rational map is a morphism. Remember that morphism means regular at all points. So if it is smooth at all points, then the maps are uh, morphisms, okay? Um, another important result about curves is that um, uh, if you have a morphism of curves, then um, phi is either uh, constant or surjective. 
Okay, so we are um, usually going to talk about non-constant curves, because then we have, um, well, non-constant -co curves are not that interesting anyways, and then we have a surjective map. Um, so uh, then if you have a, a, a map of curves, okay, if I have a map of, of curves uh, that is uh, a rational map that is uh, non-constant, and C1, C2, uh, let's say that they're smooth, um, then uh, we define a five star, uh, so it induces a map of function fields There is a, a map of function fields uh, that sends f to uh, what is phi star of f is just uh, f composed with phi. Okay, um, I can first uh, apply so to get a function out of a function in C two. How do I get a function in C one? We'll take a point uh, in C one first. Use phi to send it to C two and then apply the function f to that point. That gives you a function, but now there are functions on C1. And it turns out that this is, um, this is an injection of function fields. Okay, these are fields, so it's not that difficult to prove. Uh, injectivity, just like uh, we'll prove that it's actually um, uh, a field homomorphism and then check that the kernel uh, has to be trivial. All right, so uh, what about this function uh, phi? Um, so there are some properties uh, of this function. Well, in, in, in particular, now you can think about uh, the function field of C2 as, uh, in quotes, uh, since, since this is injective, through this phi star, you, we think about it as a subfield of the function field of C1. All right, and then we want to know uh, what kind of if this is a subfield, and then what are uh, the what's the the degree of the extension of that? Um, what is the degree? Let's see it. Let's see what this says. So um, here's a theorem. Theorem says the following. Uh, so let um, C1, C2 uh, be curves, and um, and phi to be non-constant. Then, um, first of all, uh, the extension that you get. using that phi star. Uh, let, let's remember here what phi star is again. Uh, that uh, phi star is, so phi star goes from kc2 to kc1 and sends f to uh, f composed with phi. So apply phi first and then f. Um, so this is actually a, uh, a finite extension. Okay, great. Um, more interesting is that if I have anything that looks like this, if I have an injection of function fields, then uh, there is a rational map attached to that injection. So let iota be a map of function fields um, that is an injection. Then there is a uh, a map 
a rational map phi from C1 to C2 such that phi a star is iota. Okay, that doesn't look like iota, it looks like E. Um, all right, so injections of, um, of function fields come from rational maps, and these rational maps give you injections of function fields. Uh, moreover, and this is one of those theorems in algebraic geometry that blow my mind, is that if you have any uh, finite sub-extension of your function field, it also comes from, from a curve. So let f just be uh, um, some subfield of your function field of the curve, a subfield with, uh, we, we do want, we need for a theorem that the extension is finite and it contains the base field, then there is a curve C prime over K that is smooth, uh, unique up to more, uh, unique up to isomorphism and a non-constant map phi from C1 to this C prime uh, such that phi star of K C prime is F. Okay, so that, that is uh, quite amazing that any subfield, any subfield of your functional field that is finite, uh, that the extension, the relative extension is finite, it actually comes from a curve. So it comes from geometry. So there is nothing in between that you can cook up that is some like weird extension that doesn't come from uh, another curve and some rational map that is embedding a functional field into the other. Okay. I, I find that um, quite amazing. All right, so um, now we define the degree of a map, the degree of a map from C1 to C2 is going to be the, uh, since this is a finite extension, uh, we're going to call that, uh, that degree, since it's a finite number, that is the degree of the map. So K C1 over K C2. Okay. Uh, let's look at a, uh, at a at an example. So remember that we had um, we had a map that was going from uh, z y square equals x cube plus z cubed, for example, to p1. Let's just talk about varieties over q. That sends x y z to x z. So forget the y coordinate. This enough find just takes uh, the x coordinate out of a point. And then what is the degree? Well, uh, I know how to construct my phi star. Uh, my phi star will go from the function field of uh, the P1, that is just QX, to uh, the function field of the elliptic curve. The function field of the elliptic curve is, remember we constructed it, it was X and uh, a square root. So something like the square root of x cubed plus one. Okay, that is a, uh, the function field. And this sends, this map sends x to x. Okay, um, because uh, well, if, you do the, if you do the composition of, um, of phi with the function x, then you get, let's, um, to be a little bit more clear, 
this is the x coordinate of a point in p1 well this is the x coordinate of a point on e okay uh, we call x goes to x but um, those x are slightly different functions right um, so it goes x goes to x and then uh, the degree then what is the degree of phi will be uh, the degree of this extension uh, the degree of phi star um, in kc1 so what is the degree of this extension you see that it is a finite extension of fields um, is it it's an algebraic extension it's finite and it's just given by the square root of a function so the function satisfies y squared equals a polynomial in x so that is a quadratic extension so the degree is two okay so we uh, we get that the um the degree of that function is two by the definition of degree in terms of function fields Okay, so um, let's uh, let's continue. Um, we say um, so. We are actually working. We're not restricting ourselves to fields of characteristic zero. We have fields of characteristic p, and then these extensions can be separable, inseparable. Uh, so you have to be a little bit careful. Uh, what happens in those extensions. So uh, just for uh, peace of mind, we're going to say that uh, a map phi is separable, inseparable, uh, purely inseparable, if, um, if this extension of fields is. Okay, I'm not going to get too many, uh, too much into issues of separability and separability for the most part. I'm going to try to avoid characteristic P uh, uh, just so I actually avoid these issues. Um, and um, when we talked about elliptic curves over finite fields, uh, and over fields of characteristic, of characteristic P, um, we are going to mostly side results. So I'm not going to be proving those. I'm not going to need a lot of the results that are in the book in this chapter um, that are direct to uh, things in characteristic P. Um, similarly, um, we actually discuss, we, once we have a uh, an extension that is not separable, then you might also uh, see in the book that there is not just degree of, of phi, but there's also uh, the separable degree of the extension um, or the inseparable degree of the extension and so on might come in in some of the formulas that are in the, in the book. All right. So uh, now let's talk about um, the last, uh, last 10 minutes or so, uh, let's talk about some other very important topic, which is ramification of maps. What is ramification? Let me just draw a picture quickly here. What are we worried about is uh, things of the sort. So I have uh, curves, some curve like this, and I have a map. Suppose I'm sending the curve, uh, this curve I'm projecting, for example, to P1. Okay, so this is my P1 here, and I'm sending points down to here. Okay, and this point goes to here, and this point goes to uh, here. So uh, the ramification was actually going to measure is what happens is that uh, for the most part, there's going to be how many pre-images are there here. This point is in the branch, this point is in pre-image, and this point is in the pre-image. And for the most part, there are four pre-images for every point in P1. However, in some special points, so in here, or this point, 
this point is there, this point is there, and uh, and if I continue the graph, is it something went wrong because I only have three points above my point, right? So uh, this point right here, uh, there is some geometric feature uh, that we want to identify right there. Even worse might be here. So if you go here, at this point, there's only two pre-images. If I draw my points thick enough, um, there are two pre-images right there. And also I want to identify what happened at those points. Okay, so uh, that is what ramification is going to measure and for curves. So let's define uh, these things. Um, so what we're going to do is define a ramification index. So let phi from C1 to C2 um, be non-constant uh, of uh, a non-constant map of smooth curves, uh, non-constant rational map, there is smooth, therefore amorphisms. I don't have to even say that. Uh, let P be in C1. And we define the ramification index Uh, the ramification index of phi at p to be um, given by the following formula e at phi of phi at p is going to be given by the order of vanishing at p of phi star of t at phi of p where um, T phi of P is a uniformizer uh, for, uh, for the curve um, uh, C2 at phi of P. Okay, so what is, uh, what is that measuring right here? So what's happening is that, um, so you see, by, by the way, the order of vanishing, remember that by uniformizer, I mean that the order of vanishing at phi of p of the function of phi of p is one, right? So what I'm doing is I have a function that vanishes at phi of p, uh, phi of p being on, on C2, I have a function that vanishes to order one, I'm using phi star to bring it back to C1. Okay, so I have a function here in C2, vanishes to order one at a point here, and then I'm going to bring it here using phi star. I'm going to find a function that is phi star of that uniformizer, and I'm going to check, is this still a uniformizer at, uh, at that point P, this new function? If it is still a uniformizer, then everything went well, like here. But if it goes badly, then like in this point or that point or that point, I'm going to have that I've lost the fact that those are uniformizers. And the degree of uh, vanishing now, that's going to give me the ramification. So there is some sort of like vanishing of order two there and some vanishing of order two there. Uh, for that function uh, now that um, that is going to tell me that something is going on. All right. Uh, we also say, uh, we say that um, phi is unramified at P if E phi of P is one and ramified otherwise. Okay, ramified, ramified, uh, at least from the Latin means branching. And then you can see that that's what's happening here, that at that point, there's sort of like two different branches 
start for the curve while here there is just sort of like the same branch uh, happening if you if you want to think of that way okay and and notice that the ramification is about points on the curve on the curve on top so I'm really talking about is there a ramification here no is there a ramification here yes is there a ramification there no all right so let me uh, let me in the last five minutes, Let's do an example of, of ramification, uh, computing ramification for a curve. Um, so let's see what happens if I do this. Okay, the ink stays. Um, so let take, let's take phi to be uh, a map that goes from E to uh, P1, uh, where E here is given by uh, Z Y squared equals X cubed plus Z cubed. Okay, um, so I have this elliptic curve and I'm going to uh, send it to, um, I'm just going to take uh, the map we had before that sends a point to its x coordinate okay let's look at the picture and see where the trouble might be so uh, this curve looks like um, uh, there is a point minus one uh, at minus one so well, let's look at it in 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 a fine this uh, y squared equals x cubed plus one. So there is a, a minus one zero at the point. So it goes like this. Okay. And what the map is doing is just taking a point and take the x coordinate. So you see that, that, that those points seem completely fine. And if there is a problem, it's going to happen here that there is one point above that point in the x coordinate so let's see exactly what's happening at uh, minus one zero one so what is the, ramif the ramification at p which is minus one zero one okay so uh first of all what is phi of p is uh minus one one Okay, uh, so I need a uniformizer at phi of p. In uh, in the projective coordinates, the uniformizer at the coordinate minus one is just uh, x minus that x coordinate. So x plus one is a uniformizer, and that x I'm going to put a little note here it's x in p1 right okay so that is a uniformizer in p1 for that point right so now i remember the formula that we need to compute is that um, e phi p is the order of vanishing at p of phi star whoops i was looking somewhere else is there they're vanishing at p of phi star of uh, t of phi of p. Okay, so now uh, what does phi star do? Uh, now compute phi star. Uh, phi is just going to send q of x, where x here is in p1, uh, is going to send it to q uh, of uh, of e, the function field in e, which is an x, so it's a fraction field of something like, like this uh, modulo the polynomial. Okay, so um, what it does is that phi the star of x plus one is going to be uh, is going to be sending x 
is sent to x. Okay, so it's just x plus one because you take um, what you're doing is take a point x, y, z, send it to p1, and then read the x plus one coordinate. Right, so it's the x coordinate e evaluated. So um, if I evaluate this um, in p1, what I get is x on e plus one. All right, what is the order of vanishing? The order of vanishing at P of X E plus one. That is one of the functions that we just computed. Remember when we did the order of vanishing of X minus E one Z? Here, E one is one of those. This is X, uh, plus one times something in the complex numbers. But one of the roots is E1 is minus one. So uh, we actually have computed what happens at that point. And uh, to a little bit of a surprise, the order of vanishing is two, not one, okay? And that tells you then that the ramification index or phi at P is, is, is supposed to be up here, P, um, what a mess. The ramification index of phi at p is uh, two. Is the order at p of phi star evaluated at t of phi of p, and it turns out is not one, is two. So therefore, it is ramified at that point. Okay. Um, I will stop here, and then in the next. Uh, next class, next video, we'll do the same thing, but for uh, the point at infinity and see what's happening at infinity. It's not entirely clear from the picture, at least in this chart, it's not clear is there a ramification at infinity or not. So what we're going to do is like sort of like flip the, the omelet here and look at the point at infinity and see what is happening exactly there uh, in that map. Uh, and we're going to do that algebraically, but you can do a geometric picture that I will also would tell you that actually there is also a ramification at infinity uh, of index two. So uh, until next time.